be a nuts. It's a show where two guys talk to you. Even though you can't talk back, Mr. Beat and also feel so much to talking guys. Last 30 minutes to an hour, those two guys that I mentioned never show them fear nuts. And you should watch right now. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Fear Nuts Hour, the best half hour show on the internet. I'm Mr. Beat Nuts, along with me always is Fearsome. What is our topic for today? Today we're going to review uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, Prometheus, and the DVD release Chronicle. And uh, we're going to talk about a uh, concert we went to uh, this week with K Flay and Colin Monroe and kind of. Uh, Give people a little background on them and get them interested. Alright, uh, should we start with A or you want to start with Prometheus? I say we start with Prometheus because uh, just a little heads up, I have not seen Prometheus yet. Uh, this is one that Alan has saw on his own. I was not really interested in it. It's not like he just took off without me to see it. But I wasn't really a big, as I said before, Aliens fan. So wasn't really stoked for the movie. Right, right. And I was. Uh, I The Alien was a great movie. Aliens was a work of art. It's one of the best sci-fi action movies ever created. Sci-fi horror action movies, I guess. Um, but anyway, uh, Prometheus... I still hear people debating whether it's a prequel or not. Um, if you saw it and you don't know if it's a prequel or not, then you really missed a lot. Because it's obviously a prequel uh, to the Alien series, uh, and it answers a lot of questions from the Alien series. Uh, and I don't want to give any spoilers, uh, but it does answer like where the alien uh, xenomorphs came from, and shows you like some early evolutions of them. And it just has so much greatness in it. I mean. If I had to sum up the pacing of the movie, it would be a mix between Alien and Aliens. It's got more action than Alien and more story than Aliens. And so it's like a perfect hybrid of the two that just moves along really well. Um, and then you got great acting all around. You got uh, Numi Rapace playing the, the like primary lead. She does a great job. Charlize Theron does a great job. Idris Elba, of course, does a great job. Uh, Michael Fassbender did an amazing job as the uh, android in this one. And the sets and the creature design, all of it is just super amazing. Except for one alien in it was mildly unsettling uh, because it looked like a snake with, instead of like a head, it had testicles. It looks like a scrotum. Like, when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you've seen it already, you're like, Oh my god, that thing totally did look like a fucking scrotum. Like, he's poking out of the water, and the guy's like, Oh, it's a snake. And I'm like, dude, that is somebody's fucking sack, and they're fucking with you. But anyway, uh, great movie, though. Great pacing, great design and everything. I fucking loved it. Like, I'll, I'll be buying it on Blu-ray. It's not even a question. Yeah, I'm sure I'll see it when it comes out. Uh, DVD, Blu-ray. Speaking of coming out, uh, in two weeks, God Bless America comes out. That does look like a good one. Yeah, I don't You'll know You'll definitely gonna, be uh, hearing the review on that. I think I'm going to pick it up on Blu-ray right away. But anyway. Oh, should we, th should we throw Badass in there? No, you didn't really watch it. You yeah, I didn't see it yet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Alright, so anyway, uh, Prometheus, if you're a fan of the Alien movies, it's a must-see. If you like sci-fi horror, uh, then it's a must-see. Uh, other than that, you could probably wait for DVD. But if you think you're going to like it, go see it in theaters. See it in at least 2D in theaters, if not 3D, because the 3D just really adds a lot of depth, and you can just kind of fill the detail of all the sets, which were mostly hand-done. Like, they used very little digital background in it, mainly just for the outside shots. Uh, so anyway, um, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Alright, so this is a movie we've been excited about for a while, basically since we saw the trailers for it and saw that it was Abraham Lincoln fighting vampires. And of course it's based on the novel Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, but uh... Graphic novel. Graphic novel, okay. Well, there's a difference. 
It is based on the writings of Abraham Lincoln as and vampire. drawings. And drawings. Anyway, the movie is what we're talking about. And I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was well paced. It had enough story to keep the action flowing. And what it is, it's an action movie. It is a vampire slaying action movie. And the story was just there to build on to the action, to have a reason to kill all these vampires. And uh, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, to me, it's really like Blade meets Forrest Gump. Like, it's this vampire slang movie that just uh, has little, like, happenstances that mix in with history. And uh, I, I think it works out pretty well. I like it, you know? I like that, you know, they work little things in for reasons that shit happened. I mean, we know that it's not actually why it happened. But, you know, it, it's uh, actually it was, it was taken from his actual diary. His journal was what the movie is based on. So, I mean, it's the true story that we never knew. But anyway, um, it's pretty good. And uh, I don't know what it is with, because um, uh, if you remember, Priest also ended with a vampire fighting train ride. I don't, I don't know what it is with uh, vampires and trains. Uh, it's just how vampires like to roll. They like to attack trains. I guess. I guess. Um, but that does bring up, like, I really enjoyed every action sequence except for the horse fight, which I thought looked like ass. And was just really poorly shot and done. Like, I couldn't really tell exactly what was happening in some yeah. of it. And it just, the horses and the everything just looked bad. I, I think they went too big with it. Yeah. I think if they would have kind of slimmed it down, because, I mean, they have, like, the little paddocks or whatever. And, and then all of a sudden there's a billion horses. And the, I think they used the horses too much for yeah. it. Like, it actually became, like, a third character that didn't really fit with the fight. Um, especially, like, I think if they would have even made it a different fight in the movie, it would have been fine. But that was a very personal fight yeah. to him. So, uh, yeah, it definitely took away from it in that scene. Uh, but overall, still liked it. Yeah, so over, overall, one. I think it's uh, definitely one to see in theaters. A lot of really good effects, except for that one situation. Um... I wouldn't recommend seeing it in 3D. I don't know what would really be brought to the table yeah, seeing it in 3D. Maybe the horses look fucking realistic and awesome in 3D, and we just didn't get to experience that. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but definitely worth seeing in theaters. Definitely worth checking out. And uh, it's not going to be for everyone, but it's definitely a bar alley. Yeah. Um, and uh, two side notes on this. One... Brandon finally got to see the uh, trailer for Django Unchained. What do you think? I'm stoked. I think it looks really good. He thought it was the commercial for those Reebok shoes with the orange cuffs on them. Yeah. It turned out not to be. It wasn't. But, uh, yeah, I think it looks amazing. Like, I'm super pumped. It, it looks like... Because Inglorious Bastards, and I know I'm, people are going to be so mad that I'm saying this, but Inglorious Bastards let me down. It was okay. Yeah. It, it was okay It, it was okay. It... It, it didn't grab me like most of Tarantino's movies. I mean, most of Tarantino's movies I fucking love. Inglorious Bastards, kind of boring through a lot of it. I mean, instead it, of like being surprised when shit popped off, I was just like, thank God, finally something's fucking happening. Yeah, uh, it lost me really early on in the scene with the baseball bat that took fucking 20 yeah, minutes to walk down like the trying movie, to build up the tension and yeah, then everything was just too drawn out yeah, the movie should just, have been shorter but anyway, yeah. anyway uh, another discussion for another time yeah yeah we can rant about those all day but uh other thing is uh we we polled some people to uh find out what irritated them uh, at movie theaters because we we're on the verge of beating the shit out of little kids at the movie theater. I was on the verge of beating the shit out of everyone in the theater. Yeah, I, I mean, like... It, obviously, the people right behind us, who were about 14, 15-year-old yeah. girls, were the most annoying, because they were right behind us, but everybody was fucking running their mouths during the movie. Yeah, and I mean, it was just... 
like ridiculous talking. It, it was a, it was like a movie theater full of those people that state the obvious, like fucking Abe Lincoln would chop a vampire in half, and they'd be like, "Holy shit, he chopped that fucking vampire in half!" Like, yeah, we know, fucker, we're there, we fucking saw it. So yeah, there was a lot of that, and uh, apparently we're not the only ones that get really agitated by that and dread going to theaters just for that reason. Um, and I like I get that theaters, you know, don't want to be too hard on people and make them scared to come to the theater, but I think that even the people that like the teenagers that are like, oh, they kicked me out, so I'm not coming back. I think they're going to get more adults coming in once the adults know that they're kicking out those fuckers that are yeah. doing that. And sometimes it's adults, too. But, you know... And they don't even have to, like, fucking kick people out, I don't think. I think if they have an usher walk into the fucking theater from time to time, just kind of shine a little light, look around, you know, obviously not blinding the shit out of people or whatever, but just making his presence known from time to time. And just asking someone to quiet down or whatever, I think it would be fucking great and make a world of difference. Because, I mean, obviously from our poll, people will put up with being fucking price gouged on the tickets. They'll put up with fucking having to pay like 20 bucks for a tub of popcorn and a soda. They'll put up with that shit. What they don't want to go to the theater for is because they can't enjoy the fucking movie yeah. because somebody's fucking talking the whole time. I mean, bottom line is, you know what you're walking into into a theater except for the only variable is the crowd you can prepare for you know people sneak in snacks so they don't have to buy shit at the snack bar you know how much you're going to get when you pay for your ticket but you don't know who's going to be in there with you and the fact that you know we paid 22.50 for the tickets yeah. then there was you bought some snacks that you said was $13. Yeah, it was more than 13 Then bucks. there was Just gas. Just some nachos and a drink. Gas there and back. So we were looking at about $50 for us for the evening. And just to go see a movie. Like, just we to didn't see even a movie. go do dinner or yeah. anything. We went, just two motherfuckers going to the movie theater to check out a fucking action sci fi flick. And, and someone, people just fucking shitting on that experience for their own stupid gain. Which, what were they gaining? Fucking nothing. They were just running their mouths for the sake of running their mouths and getting... And we clean. couldn't even do anything because it's like fucking 12-year-olds. Yeah. I mean, it, I would have fucking loved to turn around and see like a fucking 21-year-old sitting there. That would have been amazing because we would have got to have a movie and beat the shit out of some dumbass. But instead, we just had to be like fucking teenagers. It was very annoying. Anyway, um, so we saw a movie at home, uh this weekend after that instead of going to the theater again to check out something else uh, we finally got around to written Chronicle now this movie intrigued us because it basically looks like an American teen version of Akira was their inspiration and I strongly believe that's what it is this is what I think happened this is how I think this movie came into being some younger like fucking little hipster fuck that knows somebody is a director or producer's friend or something watched Akira, didn't fully understand it, but liked the style of it and the action of it, so decided to make a movie of it that he could understand. But, because he's a fucking idiot, even though he can understand it, a lot of it doesn't make fucking sense and doesn't really flow together very well. Um, basically, for non-Akira fans, uh, it, both stories are about uh, these teenagers that get, like, telepathic powers and become really powerful. Um, for Akira fans that haven't seen Chronicle, imagine if you had Akira, or not Akira, but Tetsuo, uh, Tetsuo split into, like, two characters, and... But, you know, you got the kind of dumb, bumbling Tetsuo, and then you have the kind of borderline psychotic te Tetsuo. Those are two characters now. And then you have uh, Kaneda, who's now a black guy. And Kaneda dies. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. 
Because I, I don't even think... A spoiler alert, no, because I, I don't want to encourage people to go see this. Uh, unless they want to see why they should be grateful that an American Akira hasn't been made yet. Because that's the only reason to see this. Uh, and if you saw Chronicle and you loved it, or you're going to see it and you love it, then fuck you, you deserve to have it ruined. Because uh, it wasn't that good. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, Kaneda dies, um, and the dumb, bumbling, uh, fucking pussy-blinded Tetsuo wins because uh, the other Tetsuo, the powerful, psychotic one, um, it, his power really fluctuates just constantly. Like, he'll go from being, like, borderline invincible to he accidentally runs into a lamp and gets knocked the fuck out. I mean, th there's just... Uh, there, there was... Like, this movie... I don't feel like... Was... Horrible. But they didn't do anything good... In the entire movie. Like... The movie is bad from beginning to end. And... It is... I, see, I wouldn't even say that. Because I liked it when... The crazy Tetsuo and Kaneda... Were broing it up. Like, I loved it then, and they were, you know, just kind of learning about their powers and just broing it up, and everybody was getting along. But that was the only, like, section of the and, movie I enjoyed. And that's Steve and Andrew from the movie, not Tetsuo and Kaneda. It, it doesn't matter. If, you're, just, if you've seen Akira, line, if you're, you're like, man, Chronicles look pretty interesting, just go fucking buy Akira and watch that, because that is one of the greatest animes ever made. See, I wouldn't even say that, because here's the thing. Um... I think there's a lot of people out there that are going to like Chronicle better because I don't think they're really going to get Akira. And you can separate that by the endings. Okay, we'll give a spoiler alert here because I'm about to drop some pretty big bombs on both of them. Um, with Akira, you learn in the end that humanity is not ready for that type of power. Yeah. And they get overwhelmed by it. And that's the lesson learned is let's just patiently evolve. Let's not try and rush it and get more than we're ready for. In Chronicle, what they learn is if you're a booty-blinded, short-sighted, hipster ass douche, eventually you're going to learn the error of your ways and become a monk with superpowers. That's well, the lesson. He didn't become a monk. He just dropped the camera off there oh, and flew well, off. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, well, he like... He didn't go to the monastery, yeah. but he became, like, all zen and self-righteous and shit. Uh, it, was, it was a bad movie. Just avoid it. That's the best advice we can give you. And if, if you're near anywhere and they say they're filming the American Akira, just kill anyone you can associated with it. Just do whatever we can to stop it. Yeah, they were shooting Iron Man 3 here in North Carolina. If I hear, like, they're shooting Old Boy here, I'm gonna go down and bomb some people. Because yeah. there's no chance of that movie being good. Is and that... that's the same thing with Akira. There's no chance of them making a good Well, actually, American there is Akira a chance movie. of Old Boy being good. If it's like The Departed, where they just make an exact shot, copy. Shot remake? Yeah. But um, that's just gonna piss me off. Yeah, uh, but at least it could still be good. There's, they're not gonna make a good Akira. Yeah, uh, they're not gonna make a good I live action Akira. I think they could make a good. Uh, I. It depends the casting. It would be really hard to pull off the cast for Old Boy. And I don't know. I saw some of the cast that didn't look too bad. But uh, anyway, anyway, um, we're actually moving along a pretty good clip. We still got like twelve minutes left in the half hour. But anyway, we'll move on to the concert uh, and. Uh, You'll have to fill in background info on these two because sure. uh, I don't know them. All right, so uh, first of all, I found out about Kay Flay back in about 2008 because uh, she did some tracks with MC Lars, who I was a big fan of. And, uh, you know, so basically, been a fan since then. Since then, and, uh, she's actually played a couple shows in Chapel Hill that I've been able to make. She's really cool. Uh, been a fan of her YouTube uh, channel. Where she posts videos, you know, tour videos, uh, book reviews. Basically, she is a female MC from California. Uh, writes really great tracks, and uh, been a fan of hers for a long time. Now, Colin Monroe 
didn't know much about him, just like uh, the last sh tour she went on, she went on with Greaves, who I didn't know much about, but became fans of his. And I've also become a fan of Colin Rose after uh, researching him. He's a Canadian uh, singer-songwriter. And uh, both of them are really good. You can find a few other things on uh, their websites and on YouTube. Uh, K-Flay has a ton of free downloads you can get. You can actually download almost all of her stuff free from her website, kflay.com. So take a look at that. But uh, I'm a big fan. There's, I knew there was a show coming up this week. Uh, it was Alan's birthday coming up. So, uh, you know, figured it'd be something cool to get tickets for us to go check her out. Uh, he wasn't very familiar with her, so I'll let him start off with his impressions of the show. Um... Well, let's take it step by step. The opening act, fucking horrible. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. And th this is not douche. Colin Monroe. Uh, this is a local, I guess, guy who knows the club owners or it's something. It's a local douche who is a talentless hack. And yeah. Uh, like, as soon as we saw him, like, uh, we saw the guitarist on stage first, and we were like, man, he is a douche. He was, kind of he was a there for a while. But then he started playing, he was actually pretty good. Yeah. Like, hey, he's a douche, but at least he's good. Then the guy got up and we're like, oh my god, there's another douche in the band. He didn't get better. He no. started singing and he was bad at it. And uh, then I got a chance to uh, talk to them and some of the people when I was outside smoking. And uh, I didn't really talk to them because I had no interest in talking to either of them. But we were all in this group outside smoking. But anyway, so apparently... The douche singer didn't even know the douche guitarist that actually had skills. They had, like, met the night before, and the guy just agreed to play guitar with him. And the singer was such a douche, even though the guy had just met him and played guitar for him, he wasn't even willing to hang out with him anymore. After that point, the guy's like, hey, let's go hang out with this dude's house. And the guitarist's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to go home and ditched him. So, ha ha, douche. But anyway. All right, yeah, uh... Can't really add much to that because it was just horrible, and he pretty well covered it. Um, so, basically, we need to form a Tenacious D tribute band because you're basically Kyle Gass, as you said, watching the tour video anyway. So, uh, next time there's a show that we're wanting to go to, we're just going to get on the card so we can avoid shitty local bands. But anyway... Um... Then uh, Colin Monroe got up on stage, and uh, I'd never heard of him or k Flay before. That's his thing. I didn't know anything about it going in. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, him and his drummer were both pretty good, uh, and he actually did a song called Your Eyes, which I thought was the best track of the entire night. Uh, I mean, k Flay's pretty good, as we'll get to, but he did that track and it was fucking awesome. It was like my, my favorite current track out right now from anybody. Um, and so he was pretty good. And uh, I should note that it took a ridiculously long time to set up between bands for no apparent fucking reason. Um, well, uh, the, the between the first and the second band, basically the guy cut off his 25 minute set to a 15 minute set, thank God. Um, and that was one of the reasons why. Was it only 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah it, it felt like an eternity. 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, basically he had 25 minutes. He only did 15. So there was 10 minutes of lull before the other group even started setting up. All right, well, uh, anyway, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Colin Monroe's pretty good. Yeah, Colin Monroe, uh, I really enjoyed. He has one album out, which uh, I don't think you can even get the digital version, but... Uh, He's worked with people like Drake and a few other uh, artists. Um, I think he's but, doing something with RZA in the studio right now. Yeah, I think I saw um, like he's working on an album with RZA. But he does have a couple good tracks up on YouTube. Uh, Your Eyes is a free uh, download from his website, which he actually did with K-Flay. So uh, definitely look that up. It's, uh, I believe, just ColinMonroe.com. If not, just Google his name, Colin Monroe, and look him up. Check that out and uh, check He's out the from Canadian. He, he is Canadian, yeah. And uh, they are still on tour, so uh, definitely look up kflay.com, see the tour dates. Uh, I know they're coming up to Chicago and Milwaukee area later in the month or in July, uh, later in July. 
Uh, so take a look at them there. I know they're going to New York. I think they just went to D.C. So uh, they they still got a lot of tour dates. So uh, all right. So K-Flay. Now for those who are unaware, K-Flay is like my number four female in the entire world. I think she's uh, very beautiful, very talented, and uh, she's my favorite female musician. I, I really enjoy her stuff and. Uh, uh, so, what were your thoughts on it? Um, I liked it. Uh, I liked it pretty well. Um, I couldn't understand half of what she was saying. Uh, one, because she rapped pretty fast, but uh, mainly because uh, the bass kind of overwhelmed her vocals, which I didn't have a problem with, because uh, I prefer the bass. And while she has good lyrics and a uh, good voice and everything, I really like the concert because the I like when the voice is kind of the background to the bass, uh, and so it worked out really well for me. Yeah, and she does have uh, and she had another really good drummer, a really good drummer with her. Yeah, and uh, yeah, basically, if you want to hear the lyrics and hear her voice, download her tracks because it's really clear on there. But for the show, you know, you are there to feel the bass just vibrating through you, and she puts on a great show. Very energetic. Uh, she ran through, you know, the first time I saw her, she was the opening act for Grieve, so it was cool to see her as the headliner so she could do a longer set. And uh, she's always, you know, there at the merch booth, you know, signing things, talking to her fans. She puts on a great show. She's very personable. Um, definitely going to see her whenever she comes around. And uh, Man, Colin Monroe has apparently done work with a bunch of people. Yeah. He's been on Slaughterhouse Track. Pac Div, Asher Roth, 88 Keys, fucking Jesus, Travi McCoy, fucking Drake, Talib Kweli, Wale, Jesus, he's been on yeah, a ton of people. He's been on a lot of stuff. He has a good voice. I'm gonna have to look some of this shit up. Definitely, uh, definitely a show to watch. So, kflay.com, look up the tour dates. Um, I know. Mark up in Chicago and Milwaukee area said he's gonna try to hit up a show. Shit, Mark's full of shit. Mark, if you hit up the show, let us know what you think. Do a video Mark, response. If you undoubtedly video. don't hit up the show and instead just get drunk at a local dive bar or play volleyball, because that's cool, uh, then let me know so I, I can tell Brandon okay. that he was wrong. First of all, I, I believe in you. Uh, I believe you're gonna see it, and we're gonna get a video response. He's gonna to this mark video. us, and you know it. Oh, speaking of which, K Flay needs to come to Lowell because Marcus has been wanting to see her for a long time. Who's he gonna go with? I'm sure he can get Jesse or Sean or one of them to go. Sean's only been out of his basement twice, and that was to see his girlfriend. Um, I got him to go to shows. He went to the MC Chris. When? The first time we went to MC Chris because he was all macking on the chick that was all over me that was there with her boyfriend. Was I there? Yeah. Is that, that with I... the grenade? Yeah. Oh, man. Sean was in love that with that happened. friend. With the grenade? With the friend. No, the, oh. the girl. Oh, yeah. I was like, Jesus Not Christ, grenade. why didn't he jump the fucking I, I would have, uh, if I knew that, I'd be like, hey, Sean, grenade. Of course, you wouldn't even got the grenade reference, probably, but uh, I would have said... Sean knows what jumping on the grenade I is. think he does now. I don't know if he did then. This is back mm -hmm. in the day. But uh, He's a sheltered little fella. Anyway, so... There was something else I was going to throw in. I can't remember it for the life of me. What was it? I have something no idea. happened that we were going to throw in recently? Something awesome happened? I don't know. I uh, went cool. to the show. I mean, I'm going to Nature's D Tuesday. It'd be awesome. Yeah. But you yeah. should still find a way to go to. Can't do it. Every, you listen. Find somebody to buy my testicles. Birthday. People need to buy him a ticket and let him print it off. Just send, you can print it off, I'll print it off for him at work. It was like... I, I've gotten a couple of presents from all the people I expected to. So listen, everybody who watches this show, kick in $10 to my PayPal account. I'll throw in the link to my PayPal account. I'm going to buy him a ticket with the money that you kick towards me. I work Tuesday. Well, you can get off. It's the D. Just walk in like it's D time. Your motherfucker go and walk out. Sure, that'll be cool with. Anyway, send me money. I'm gonna buy him a ticket. All right. Did you think of it? No. 
No. Okay. Well then, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, for those in my Blood Bowl League, the video is in the process of uploading, but it's fucking huge. Uh, it will be uploaded at some point under the Fear Nuts name as the Fear Nuts special event. Why didn't you fucking change the format shit to lower the size? I did. How big is it? It is huge. Jesus fuck Christ. So anyway, this is the Fear Nuts Hour signing off.